you have things that you could be working on that can benefit you right now instead of consistently trying to work on things to benefit us for the future that we don't even know we'll have. And that's tea. <laughs> Hey, Vicky Bays, welcome back to my channel. I'm not doing anything special on my makeup. It's the same makeup that I have from my previous Get Ready With Me. So if you want like more details on like the products and the actual makeup that I'm using, I'll have that linked for you to watch. Yes. I haven't seen y'all Get Ready With Me wise since, what was that? Like the first couple of days of January. We have February which is insane to me. Um, time has been flying so fast. And I kind of talked about this a little bit on my TikTok. I know I can't be the only person that feel like life is just going by so fast right now. Like there used to be a time where I could really feel myself living and things just took their time, you know? Like just moments took their time. And now I feel like I wake up and it's five o'clock. Like the sun is literally about to go down. I just, I don't get it. I genuinely feel every day is like a couple of hours long. So I have been trying to make the most of my days, trying to do so much within each day. And I actually had to take a step back last week. I had a couple of days off and I started feeling really sad um, just out of nowhere, I was talking to my girl, Natalie, and I got off the phone with her and then called her back a couple of hours later. And she was like, what happened to your energy? Like, you seem down. And I was like, honestly, girl, I don't know. And that was after me working eight days in a row. And we came to the conclusion that I don't actually really have a Sabbath. Like I work a very odd schedule. It's not a Monday through Friday. I don't have, oh, every Saturday I'm gonna have off, every Sunday I'm gonna have off, or even every Tuesday. It's It varies depending on the month. It's hard for me to have just one day of complete rest and not doing anything, which, you know, we're supposed to have. I went to the range for the first time. Um, never held a none of that so it was intimidating but i went to the range just to you know practice especially i feel like as women we have to know how to protect ourselves i know that that is a very sensitive topic um you know whether you choose to have them in the house or not i mean i'm not really speaking on that that's that's a personal decision i do feel like it's important to at least know how to operate them and just knowing safety in general because it is it is a very serious piece of machinery like it is a weapon i am just proud of myself for getting through it because y'all know i've been working through my anxiety so just exposure therapy it was a part of my exposure therapy getting out of the house and putting myself in an unfamiliar environment that i haven't been in yet and just being open to learning different things i think i get a certain level of anxiety when it comes to new places new people and new experiences so I'm pushing myself at least once or twice a month to get out and do something that's kind of out of my comfort zone. And I really enjoyed myself actually. Um, it was not as scary as I thought it was gonna be. I don't know if YouTube lets us talk about stuff like this. I guess we don't see, but. So aside from the range, I also went to the mall yesterday. Um, got into the casino and just, you know, going to spaces that are typically pretty crowded for my exposure therapy. And I've never really been like a browse around type of person. Even when I wasn't dealing with this, I'm like, I have a list, like I'm a very get in and get out type of person. I don't really like window shopping or looking around or anything like that. But I actually really enjoyed myself yesterday looking around in the mall and I saw these little Dolce & Gabbana heels that I was like, love those. I might start investing in some luxury pieces just because I need to do better at treating myself. So that's on my list of things to do. Y'all know I've been very transparent with y'all about my eating journey. When I get anxious, 
it's like my throat closes up and I can't really eat out in public restaurants, things like that. And I'm speaking on it for several reasons because it is such a big thing that's going on in my life that's affecting me tremendously. But also, I don't know if there's somebody else that may need to hear this that's going through the same thing. So I am gonna keep talking about it. At first, it felt a little bit weird because it's so personal. But then I got to the point where I was like, everything that we do is for other people. Even God pulling me through this, it's not just for me, you know? It could be for someone else. And me being on a platform where I feel comfortable because it's not always comfortable, but I feel confident enough to tell the world my business basically is probably because somebody else needs to hear this. Somebody else needs to hear what I'm going through and see how I get through it and just how he's able to pull us through things. It's a process and I'm, I'm not there yet, but I have faith. And yesterday I did go to Bole, which if you don't have Bole or don't know what Bole is, it's like a healthy fast food. They do bowls. They have these sweet potato noodles that are so good and um, like protein and veggies, um, kind of similar to, I guess, a kava. I've never been to kava or like a fresh kitchen, but it's so good. So if you have one that's near you, I highly recommend trying that. But I went there with my mom and I tried to eat, which was good. You know, it was a baby step for me. I'm not there yet. Um, sometimes it can get really discouraging when you go to try something and it doesn't happen immediately or you know i'm not able to like really enjoy myself or enjoy my food but i was at least proud that i tried that was my first time and another thing too with the time flying right i didn't realize that that was my first time being in an eatery basically since turks like since september i always get my food and bring it home or i'll eat in the car or something like that like in isolated secluded spaces so i was really proud of myself for even attempting to and not just automatically going for what's easy because they have a drive through and even at that point i'm like you know i asked my mom like do you want to go inside like because i could have just pulled through the drive through but i'm like you know get out the car like go inside you have to start getting used to certain spaces and I did go to the gym a couple of times in January. I don't know if I told y'all that cause y'all know I wasn't going to the gym cause I was so anxious. I didn't even work out. Like the first time I went in there and I literally just stretched and then I left. And then the second time that I went in there, I went with my mom. So I walked on the treadmill for like 20 minutes, which I would have preferred to do some weightlifting, but it's like, I gotta do what, you know, I have to do in terms of baby steps and taking my time and just letting myself ease into things. And the more that I think about it like that, the more proud of myself that I am. Like we're so focused on what we have to do in the future that we don't give ourselves time to really appreciate the present. And even looking back just on this past couple of weeks and this past month, I'm like, dang, Danae, like you're really doing it. Like I could almost get emotional thinking about it because a couple of months ago in like November, December, I was not leaving the house, y'all. Like I was literally staying in the house. Going to the grocery store was a stretch for me. Even in the grocery store, I was kind of having anxiety attacks a little bit. And so I would get in, I'd be in there like super quick and then I would come back and I wasn't really leaving like a three to five mile radius from my house. And now it's like, I have plans. I'm intentional about, yes, I need days where I can just do nothing because that's healthy for me. And also I'm gonna need days where, all right, Danae, like you may not feel like doing this, but just try and push yourself to do these things. It's been a process, but I'm, I'm excited to see where things go. It's also helping me with keeping discipline. I'm also in therapy, so shout out to my therapist. I, I absolutely love what she's helping me push through and just thank God for bringing me to her as a resource. That's another thing, God, will give you what you need at the time that you need it. Because I actually found her through one of my friends and me and my friends, we all live in different spaces. So my girl, Abby actually lives in Dallas and we don't get to talk as often. And she called me one day and we just started talking and I'm opening up to her about what I'm going through. 
And she's like, I actually know of this website. It's uh, therapyforblackgirls.com. She told me about it and I went on there and I found my therapist and I actually am just so happy with how the process is going. She's helping me through so much. Another reason why I'm sharing these things with y'all, we need to get in the space where we understand the power of us sharing our struggles. I feel like society, we have this whole notion of keep things to yourself. And yes, of course, be discreet with who you share things with. And it's completely up to you with what you share. But at the end of the day, you can't keep things secret that you want transformation in, you know? Like one of my sermons from last year, I take notes, you know, on my sermons and I keep them in my planner. One of the sermon notes was, God can't comfort what you won't confront. And one of the ways that we can confront the things that we're going through is by sharing that with our community and our safe space because they may be able to lead you to a resource that helps to start your healing. God points us to each other because he's using us to help each other, so. If you are going through anything, I highly recommend talking to your safe space, whether that's a church community, whether that's family or friends, anybody that you feel close or connected to. I mean, honestly, I say this all the time, like my comment section is a conversation. So even in my comments, if there's something that you're going through, there may be someone else going through the same thing and we could maybe try to push some resources your way or just even prayer, just someone else knowing that you're going through something and wanting to bring you out of that can help. But I was thinking that I had an issue with discipline. The more that I started working through my my thoughts and like do I really have a discipline issue because I it would be so hard for me to film when I said I was gonna film and just doing things in general like I'd be like I need to do this and I would completely blow it off for that day I don't think I have a discipline issue I think my issue is with obedience <laughs> especially because a lot of the things I'm putting off are things that I feel called to do. And I've been doing that a lot. Like I'll feel called to reach out to certain people. I'll feel called to even make content. That's why this is all that I'm doing today is making content. Like I feel called to make content. I didn't even know that I was gonna talk about half of the things that I'm talking about. I have a list of like, these are some things you can talk about, but I didn't know I was gonna go this deep. And when I start doing that, I know I'm like, the spirit is moving me to talk about these things for some reason, one reason or another. There may be somebody who needs to hear it. And imagine if I would have posted this when I felt called to, because I procrastinate a lot and just pushing past like that procrastination, you know, and just feeling like sometimes the enemy really be pushing procrastination on me as a personality trait. like. I used to claim procrastination. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a procrastinator or oh, yep, if anybody's gonna be late to something, it's me, I'm not punctual. And I think there's sometimes that we claim things because it's not as embarrassing if you can claim something about yourself and other people think that about you. It's like, you can't make me feel bad for something that I already told you first. Like if someone were to call me a procrastinator, it's like, I know I'm a procrastinator and instead of being like actually no that's not me and that's not my personality and that's something that i want to work on and i can work on i've started working on that like being more punctual doing a better job at work just being a better employee and even if you're in a workspace that you don't want to be there it's like you're doing good work not because you want any sort of accolades or not because you want anything from it but just like doing good work because i want to be a good representation of god i feel like i'm prolonging or delaying parts of my purpose because I don't feel like doing the things that I want to do at that time or on that day. And I try to make it convenient for me. Like, okay, I'm going to talk about something and this is going to be a journey video that I film, but I'm not going to film it until I have a day off. And y'all know sometimes I don't have a day off until literally a week later. I work like seven or eight days in a row sometimes. I'm like, I'm going to film this on the ninth instead of filming it on the first and or it just like when I feel called to film something and speak about something I should be filming it that day honestly like when I have these feelings sometimes we get these ideas and also we take a lot of credit for our ideas like we take a lot of credit for our cre creativity instead of giving the credit to the creator like 
the things that pop in my head are not my own you know they're they and they i feel like they just come from out of nowhere but they're really not coming from out of nowhere honestly like you know so i'm just doing doing better on being obedient so that i can be a vessel um and just reach whoever i need to reach even if it's just you know one person i really struggled with feeling purposeless a couple of years ago like before I gave my life to Christ I used to feel really really purposeless like and I was struggling on like I what is my purpose and and just feeling like my purpose is being tied to a job somehow I felt like because I wasn't enjoying what I was doing in my career and because I wasn't making a certain amount of money or whatever that I just didn't have a purpose or because I, I didn't have kids and I wasn't married. Um, all the things that typically we draw into our identity, like I'm a whatever it is, I'm, I'm a business owner or I'm a mom or whatever, like we draw those things into our identity and I didn't have anything to really draw into my identity instead of just being me. And so I was feeling like I didn't have a purpose. And it's so funny because now I'm continuously feeling like, you know what? I don't know how I thought that my purpose was like attached to monetary gain or attached to a certain role. Now I genuinely feel like my purpose is whatever God says that my purpose is. <laughs> and it's the, my stress levels on life have went down so much me feeling like I'm here for a purpose and not having to figure out what that purpose is I just know that I'm here for a purpose and he's gonna use me in that way and sometimes we don't see it until after it's already been done it's this it's in the details you know it's in the small everyday things like every day there's a purpose for what we have going on. And my grandma is a pastor. I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that to y'all before, but if I haven't already, my grandma is a pastor. And in one of her sermons last month, um, she mentioned how we have to meditate daily on the Lord's word. And he gives us our tasks for that day. And through obedience, you know, just like carrying out the tasks that he set for us for that day, we are, achieving our purpose like he he gives us our purpose and i feel like before i was trying to make my purpose basically yeah if you're struggling with purpose i would say like just pray on it and just remind yourself that you don't have to be so in control of everything like it's okay if you don't know what your purpose is and a lot of times it's not meant for us to know like i feel like that was a very heavy topic a couple of years ago too like oh make sure that you're working towards your purpose and and the word purpose was getting thrown around a lot there was just a lot of misuse of the word purpose also just feeling confident in god's plan for you because oddly enough i don't really have a plan right now um, I mentioned this in my last video where I was saying I hate it when people ask me that question like what do you want to do in the next five years or like what's your long-term goals short-term goals like I I don't like none of that and it's funny because I don't I feel like this is the most I haven't had a plan in my life and this is the most confident I've ever felt because I'm putting the confidence in his plan like, I don't have to know what's gonna happen. I just, I know that if he tells me to do something, I need to do it. You know, if he tells me to go somewhere, I need to go, I need to go there. If he tells me to speak to somebody, I need to talk to that person. And so like, just really listening to his plan versus my plan. Like one of the reasons why I was so stressed out was because I was trying to make a plan and do I wanna purchase a home? Do I not wanna purchase a home? But the housing market is really bad or do I want to get a new job? Then if I get a new job, then this, then that, or maybe I should just quit my job and focus on content 100% of the time, but then I won't have any money. It's just like all these things. And you can really stress yourself out. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't plan things, but 
A lot of times we overcomplicate it. You have things that you could be working on that can benefit you right now instead of consistently trying to work on things to benefit us for the future that we don't even know we'll have. And that's tea. I want to invest in and buy this property so that 30 years from now it's going to have this amount of equity. Like who told you you was going to be here 30 years from now? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I do want to try the Sephora blurring. It's like a micro smooth blurring powder. I've heard good things about it. And then Natalie also has it. And I was watching her do her makeup yesterday. I was like, ooh, yes. I need, I need a pressed powder for sure. I just have this loose powder. Also, if y'all know any skincare products, anything that you can do to kind of like minimize these lines, like not necessarily frown lines, but like forehead lines, please let me know. Because I don't want to go through the whole Botox thing. Nothing wrong with Botox at all. I was considering it. I just don't want to go through it because I feel like that's a whole nother bill. Ooh, ooh, too much. I'm also back in my reading era. Like over the last few months, I've read so many books. A lot of self-help books. I enjoy self-help books. I like positive reads. I like nonfiction, but I do want to get into some fiction. So if you have any recommendations, drop them down in the comments because I'm back in my reading era. Read quite a few books over the last few months and I'll pop up on the screen the books that I've read all of them very very good I feel like the best one though out of all of them that I was like wow I really like this one was the traveler's gift so definitely recommend that because it was self-help fiction like the best of both word worlds it was such a good book um so as for what I'm reading right now I really just have been in my bible heavily like I have been reading my bible every single day and just so good. Like I'm currently in numbers. I'm going back and forth between Old Testament and New Testament. Okay, now I gotta brush this off. All right, y'all, we actually did it. So I did DIY lash extension lashes for the first time and they didn't come out too bad. Like I definitely have some areas I could improve on, but I'm not mad at it. And if you want to see how I did it and what I used, I will have that video linked up here for you guys to go watch. But now I just got to spray on some setting spray. I'm using the Patrick one size. Okay, and we're done. We're done. That's we're done. We're ready. Our hair is out and big. Scent of the day, we got our Chanel Chance. This is the Eau Tendre. I think that's how you say it. Um, any French speakers, let me know if I butchered that. But smells so good. Oh, and this is in my perfume that you need to buy or need to buy your girl. I did a video for Valentine's Day. Like these are perfumes that you need to buy your woman if you want her to smell just exquisite. So I'm gonna have that linked up here as well. And then let me give y'all a little snippet of the fit. Okay, so this is the dress that I'm wearing. Hello. Do we love it or do we love it? Like I got this dress actually on a Black Friday sale. So I'm definitely gonna be on their Black Friday sale next year. But J-Lux label had some really classy form fitting. Just love, love their dresses. This is actually a sweater material. And I'm trying to stick with like neutrals and blacks, like colors that I could wear anywhere. So I'm just loving it. And yeah, I just, I'm feeling really, really pretty. So. Thank you guys so much for just always letting me chit chat to y'all and Vin and getting ready and just learning life and doing girly things. And I, I love y'all. I just wanted to say that I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like, comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. Share, give me some exposure. Subscribe so you can be a vacay bay. And I will see you guys in the next video. Love ya.